very pleasant good evening to all the listeners of ebc radio and a very happy uh, wednesday evening to all the listeners of ebc and joining me right now as a uh, simon haft md assistant professor uh, department of surgery division of uh, neurosurgery at robert wood johnson uh, medical school and outward johnson University Hospital, and he's going to be with us. Let me give you a little brief about uh, Dr. Simon Haft. Uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital is a regional and national leader in advanced neurology techniques and capabilities. In plain terms, RWJs, neurosurgeons, are experts in using the most advanced surgical techniques to treat many types of tumors as well as conditions affecting the spine. Here to tell us more about this is Dr. Simon Haft. Dr. Haft is an assistant professor of surgery who specializes in neurosurgery at Rutgers, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for being on the airwaves of ABC Radio. Uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing, Doctor, today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I think this is uh, you know, a great opportunity to let your listeners know what we've been doing here and, and kind of what we're planning also for the future. You know, Doctor, I think uh, the types of uh, surgeries you do, I think they are so special uh, to the mankind all over the world. And I think we are so proud to have you. Uh, and you are a great uh, I will say, great contributor to the humane society all over the world. Uh, let me start with the first question. Welcome, doctor. Can you tell us mm-hmm. about RWJ's neurosurgery program and why its ability to treat tumors is so unique? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a great question, especially nowadays when there, you know, uh, patients and families are flooded with lots of options advertisements and commercials and uh, even their own primary care doctors developing hospital affiliations. I think it can be confusing for patients to kind of figure out where to go. Um, And I think some of the things that we provide that are unique to us um, include what you touched upon, which is that um, we have a multidisciplinary approach um, to tumors of both the brain and spine. And multidisciplinary meaning that it's not just neurosurgery, but it's also radiation oncology, it's oncology. There are a lot of specialties that the hospital has under one roof. And very well-trained people coming from excellent institutions, Columbia is where I train, Harvard, Hopkins, all of these are, are here in Central Jersey uh, at Rutgers, at the hospital, and at the Cancer Institute. And... Um, you know, for a patient who is diagnosed with one of these tumors, um, they can come to this place and have all of this excellent training and uh, all of this, all these specialists really under one, uh, one roof working together in concert to handle these kinds of things. Now, that's kind of the general gist. And the more specific is we bring very... Uh, very specific skill sets to the table when it comes to uh, things that I'm sure people have heard about who follow your show, such as gamma knife radio surgery, which is a non-invasive, uh, very focused form of radiation that can treat brain tumors. And we have the most state-of-the-art machine in the state. We also are very distinguished by the fact that um, we perform what is called laser surgery or laser laser ablation therapy. And that's something that we also do for very difficult to reach, essentially inoperable brain tumors. In combination of those things, I think, distinguish us. And, of course, we have at our disposal the ability to deal with complicated brain tumors through uh, standard uh, open surgical techniques. But even with those open standard techniques, we still avail ourselves of things like navigation. It's basically a GPS of the brain with a very fine cut MRI that I use on all my cases. And technology in that vein that helps to really put us 
uh, on a different level when it comes to handling these kinds of cases. And folks, if you just joined us, uh, I'm in conversation talking to Dr. Haft, and uh, you'll be all glad to know that uh, Dr. Simon Haft is an assistant professor, Department of Surgery, Division of uh, Neurology at Rutgers, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. My next question to you, sir, is as you mentioned, Gamma Knife Technology. Can you just tell us why the hospital source of this technology to treat uh, tumors? Say, why, why the hospital? Can you say that again? Yeah, you know, you mentioned that Gamma Knife Technology. Sure. Uh, can you tell us why the hospital? So this uh, technology is uh, to treat uh, tumors. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, gamma knife is uh, is becoming a um, more uh, recognized uh, way of treating. Well, originally, and by originally I mean 20, 25 years ago, before the therapy even made it to this country, uh, originally was considered inoperable tumors, and inoperable tumors is a very broad category. But what we do with gamma knife is we get to very deep-seated tumors, sometimes tumors in very important areas, um, either motor function or language function, and usually tumors that are too small to put someone through a large operation. And what the gamma knife does that conventional radiation does not is it gives us a very, very focused, way of treating the tumor, meaning we don't have radiation spilling over and affecting the other tissue in the brain. You could imagine how important that is because a lot of the brain, amazingly, not all of it, which some of your listeners might be aware of, but there are critical portions of the brain that we need to spare. Some portions of the brain, that's not so much of an issue. But when you're giving radiation, for example, something that your listeners may be aware of, such as whole brain radiation or radiation that's conventional, that includes a larger field, those forms of radiation can be very debilitating to a patient long term. Their memory can suffer. Their higher thinking can suffer. And gamma knife spares a lot of those problems from unfolding for a patient who has these kinds of tumors in the brain. So it, it has fewer long-term side effects, is very focused, and allows us to really effectively treat tumors that otherwise don't have a great solution for them or a great surgical solution. And my next question to you, sir, is uh, how does it work and what types of patients do you treat with this technology? Yeah. It's a combination of patients. So some patients have benign tumors, what we would call, for example, a meningioma. It's a slow-growing tumor in the lining of the brain, not actually from the brain tissue itself. Some people get treated for acoustic neuromas, very, very sensitive to this form of radio surgery. Acoustic neuromas, again, another type of benign tumor coming from uh, one of the nerves at the base of the brain. And expanding the indications include uh, metastatic tumors. That's probably the category that we use gamma knife the most for, meaning tumors that come to the brain from somewhere else in the body, a lung cancer, a breast cancer. And obviously these are extremely common cancers, and they do commonly spread to the brain. And so that's why gamma knife is being used more and more, and that's why the hospital made a very important investment in this technology mm -hmm. to treat patients who are, who are afflicted by these very common forms of cancer that spread to the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the benefits to a patient? Benefits include, it's it, in, in to some degree, it's almost uh, one of the major benefits is what you don't develop if you undergo a major operation or the other form of radiation. The other form of radiation that, that I discussed before can leave you with memory loss and other cognitive problems. Surgery, as one might expect, can take a physical toll on the body and also has risk of causing damage to other parts of the brain. 
So for those tumors that we think are too risky for an operation or if the patient is too sick for an operation, gamma knife is an excellent solution for that kind of patient. Um, and that's, in, in, in general, what, what the, uh, the benefit is, meaning to avoid some of those issues. Now, the positive specifics to the intervention are that it's an outpatient procedure. It's done in a very comfortable setting. Um, the patient comes in the morning and leaves sometimes even before noon. Wow. There's no incision made. Um, a frame is fitted onto the head, and that is done under a little bit of sedation. And very rarely does a patient complain about it. And if they do, they usually complain of very mild discomfort or neck stiffness from having had the frame on. We'll even play our favorite music while you're having a gamma knife on, so make sure to bring your request with. Now you can play ABC radio there. <laughs> What's that? I said you can play our radio there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we can stream you know, it in be... live. You have a very soothing voice, so I, I think I'm actually going to recommend it. Uh, I think um, it is so amazing to speak to you, somebody like you who is doing so many surgeries, especially brain. And I think uh, with this new t uh, technology and technique and expertise, how the world is changing, and I think this program will, is an eye-opener for so many of our listeners. Tell us, what is the laser uh, ab ablation? Yeah, that's... So, Gamma Knife, we have this the true state-of-the-art machine and have done now over 600 procedures. Gamma Knife is something that has been around. Um mm -hmm. The laser ablation therapy is much newer. There is a no doubt that this institution, this hospital, Cancer Institute along with it, uh, and my colleague, Dr. Shavar Donish, one of the neurosurgeons here with me, a real pioneer in this field. This is uh, an area where similar to gamma knife, meaning tumors in the brain um, that are difficult to get to, that a patient may be too sick to undergo a major operation, we can through a very minimally invasive approach, really through uh, essentially a, a bee sting kind of incision, deliver a, a two millimeter probe into the tumor itself, and that a probe has a laser fiber in it, and this laser brings very high concentrated heat. It basically cooks and kills the tumor. We've had tremendous early results with this, results that aren't purely us, our experience, but results that are now at a few centers across the country and are being published. And this kind of approach is getting a lot of traction in the field. But the institution here, at, uh, Robert Wood Johnson Hospital, the Cancer Institute, Rutgers, we've done the most of these in the world. We've done almost 200 of these. And the institution that's done the second most is probably in the 70s or 80s. So we've really um, made, made a name for ourselves, uh, both as surgeons and as an institution in this area, especially now as more and more institutions, Columbia, Hopkins, Sloan Kettering, are starting to incorporate this technology. But we were very ahead of the curve on this. And again, just to reiterate, this is for tumors that are similar to what we treat in gamma knife. Uh, tumors that are deep-seated and small um, and are in a location that might be too difficult to access surgically. Uh, is this approach safe? Uh, how accurate is it? Yeah, I mean, the accuracy is, is, is pretty tremendous. Uh, usually, we can get the accuracy uh, down to less than one millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that based on a couple of things. One, one of the major things is we get a very fine-cut MRI, meaning mm -hmm. the slices are very thin, which is not typical for the MRIs that you get at an outpatient or an open MRI kind of setting, a special MRI. And then we merge that with markers that we place on the patient with a very fine-cut CT scan that we get the morning of surgery. So you have two very, very fine-cut images uh, one done the morning of the surgery and one typically done the night before, almost real time, that uh, translate into an incredibly high degree of accuracy, which we need because sometimes we're passing this very small probe 
along relatively long distances mm-hmm. in the brain to very small targets. So we can't tolerate the error that you can accept if you're doing cryotherapy in the liver, for example, or something where the where the accuracy doesn't matter as much because the tissue can can absorb it. The brain, as you know, it, it can't take the extra energy. Everything's got to be focused on the tumor. You can't hurt the surrounding tissue. And Doctor, what are the potential advantages of laser ablation treatment? Well, one of the advantages is, is I mean, very specifically, um, when we do gamma-knife, and the success rate of gamma-knife is very high, it's in the 80 to 85 percent rate, one year after the intervention, basically for almost all types of tumors. Um, sometimes, 15 to 20 percent of the time, you get a tumor that still grows. And dealing with that kind of tumor can be very tricky. Um, a lot of times, uh, and still very common, because the laser isn't widespread yet, but very commonly oncologists will just kind of, you know, treat with an additional type of chemotherapy or just observe with MRIs, almost throw their hands up. There's very little to do in that circumstance, unfortunately. The laser really fills that role. It fills that role for those kinds of tumors that aren't responding to the gamma knife. And we know that it's its uh, application will probably expand. There are some cases here where we've used it up front for what we consider inoperable primary tumors of the brain, tumors such as glioma, glioblastoma. Um, It's not often we do that, but in certain situations where we have no option, the laser can sometimes be utilized. So the, the applications are narrow now, because it's an early technology, and we have to be careful about using it properly. But there's, it's been very effective within that narrow utilization. And, uh, no, Doctor, um, I really thank you so much. If someone would like to get more information about all this uh, capabilities, how can they connect with you? Can they send you an email? Yeah. The best way, when I, when I do phone my patients, is I like to have an open line of communication. I give my patients my uh, email address so they can email me directly. And for any of your listeners, if they have additional questions, if they feel that they um, might be a candidate for any of the things that we discussed, or if they have family members they think uh, might benefit from this, they should email me directly. And my name is Simon Hanf. So my email address is Simon, and that's S I M O N dot, again, my last name, Hanf, spelled H A. N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, T as in Thomas, and that's at Rutgers.edu, R-U-T-G-E-R-S.edu. So again, Simon.ham at Rutgers.edu, and that's really the best way. Now, if that you're in a car and you're not able to take that down, go into the Cancer Institute of New Jersey website, even the hospital website. It's very easy to search for me. It's very easy to search for the program multiple pages dedicated to this in an effort to kind of get the word out to patients who are unaware that this technology exists. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Simon Haft. Um, we're so uh, grateful and thankful to you and to uh, Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital for making this possible for our listeners. A breakthrough uh, from, you know, in, in medical uh, sciences. So thank you, sir. You have a wonderful evening, and we'll catch you soon on ABC Radio. Thanks so much for having me on. Happy to do this again anytime, and uh, appreciate the uh, the savvy questions. Hopefully we'll get together again soon. Thank you, sir. Folks, are tuned to ABC. There is a special feature on ABC, a medical...